guys, filming on location. <laughs> What's going on? Gonna talk about EV cars for a little while, if you don't mind. By 2035, we'll all have to go electric if we buy a new car. However, there is a virtually zero chance that an electric car will be a genuine carbon zero form of transport. But you didn't know that. Yet Trudeau's government policies continue to behave as though it will be. What's going on? Why are the mainstream media now saying EV cars are also bad for the environment? Is there a hidden agenda? I have a theory. But first, let's explore the myth that an EV car is best for the environment. And then let's look at the darker side of all this. Under the current Trudeau government plan, electric will be the only kind of new car available to buy after 2035. And as we have highlighted before on this channel, Canada is all in on EV batteries with billions of dollars invested in battery plants and the plan to mine the minerals in Canada, northern Ontario to be more precise. Trudeau wants to ban purely petrol or diesel cars with hybrids the only gas driven options that will be available. But is the electric car really as green as it appears? We all know pure electric cars don't have exhaust pipes, so unlike a petrol or diesel car, they don't emit toxic gases while they are driven. But that doesn't make them zero emission vehicles, as they are often called. So where do they win and where do they lose when it comes to their environmental credentials? Let's first look at power station emissions as they are key to this. An electric car is only as clean as the electricity used to charge it. Fossil fuels generate 18% of Canada's electricity and in Britain, my home country, 40% of electricity is derived from fossil fuels. By far the largest amount of electricity in Canada is produced by nuclear power stations. So you could say cars in Canada will all be nuclear powered by 2035. The government clearly has its work cut out to meet the 2035 deadline for eliminating fossil fuels from the national grid because we are still nowhere near solving the problem of what to do when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. Other possible solutions such as battery storage or hydrogen production look like being a long way into the future and overly expensive. For now, driving an electric car simply displaces carbon emissions from the roads to distant power stations. Did you know it takes more carbon to make an EV car? Making an electric car typically involves 40% more carbon emissions than producing a petrol or a diesel car. This is because the batteries are composed of rare materials that have to be mined in large quantities. Given that manufacturing emissions make up a large part of a vehicle's whole life emissions, electric cars look significantly less environmental friendly than they first appear. How far do you have to drive before an electric car can truly have a lower lifetime emission than a petrol car? No one has worked that out yet, but we do know EV cars have a terrible resale value, therefore most people would lease an EV car and that is usually for a three year option. So a new EV every year, yeah, you can do the maths there. A comparison between a Volvo Polestar EV and a diesel Volvo concluded that making the EV involved 24 tons of carbon, 70% higher than the 14 tons of carbon involved in the manufacture of the diesel. This means that the carbon break even point occurred typically around 85,000 kilometers for a gas car and 135,000 for the electric vehicle. Because of their limited range on a full charge, most electric cars are used as runabouts in towns and cities, and so will take a long time to reach their whole life emissions milestone before they are handed back after the three year lease. Carbon emissions aren't everything. Even if the government, along with environmental pressure groups such as Just Stop Oil, often behave as though they are. One big problem with pollution in cities is microparticles, less than 2.5 microns in size. These particles can penetrate deep into their lungs and have been linked to heart disease. The good news is that this micro pollution has been reduced over the past 50 years, thanks to fuel coal fires, natural gas home heat and cleaner cars. But will electric cars help reduce micro pollution? Well, there is little hope of that. 
A study by Emissions Analytics concludes that modern petrol engines are so efficient that they are responsible for only a tiny proportion of overall these micro particles and nearly 2,000 times as much comes from vehicles, brakes and tyres. Electric cars have regenerative braking which involves the motor working in reverse and reducing the wear on the brake pads. But EVs are heavier than petrol cars which means more wear on tyres and more of those micro particular emissions. According to the University of Leeds recent data, a typical electric car puts out two and a half times more stress on the road surface as an equivalent petrol car. While this might not matter too much on highways, which are constructed with the heaviest trucks in mind, it matters a great deal on side roads. More stress means more potholes and more damage to bridges, culverts and other related structures. There's not just a financial price to pay for the damage. There are carbon emissions associated with the production of asphalt, which we all know is an oil product. Then we have the real price of rare metals in EV batteries. A typical battery requires 8 kilogram of lithium, 35 kilogram of manganese and 6 to 12 kilogram of cobalt, all of which have to be mined. There are particular concerns with cobalt because 60 to 70% of it comes from the Republic of the Congo. 15% of the cobalt used in making electric car batteries is produced by casually employed workers with few rights and little safety leg legislation to protect them. But what is this hidden agenda? I'll leave you with this thought. Well, let's see. Gas cars are bad. Get rid of gas cars. EV cars are being slowly introduced as also being bad. Next year, bicycle will be bad. Then walking will be the only option. And where does that eventually lead us? Well, right into the path of the 15 minute city plan where the government retains full control of its citizens. There you go. Think about that one. Till next time. Enjoy charging. I filled it with gas so I can go home now. <laughs>